Mm. Um, listen, I have to take off on my trauma counselling session. Could you keep an eye on things here for me? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's not exactly peak hour, is it? Wait for it. School will be out soon. <laughs> I'm bored. Oh, I know you are, darling. I tell you what, mate. Why don't I give you one of Dad's super milkshakes, eh? Can you have one too when he gets here? I don't see why not. Looks like you've got things under control. I'll see you later. Yeah, good luck with your counsellor, eh? Mm, thanks. <laughs> You know the real reason why your mum's going? She can't bear to see how much ice cream I put in these thick shakes. You know, one bloke, he actually sucked the back of his head through the straw. <laughs> Hello. Oh, thank the Lord you're here, Aunt. Do we do soy shakes? Yes, we certainly do. I'll take care of it. Yeah, good on you. Can you check the squishy toaster, too? Hey, Mum. Yes, Dunk. Stick him up. You've got some explaining to do, young fella. You better hop it, Nick. Now, where did you get the gun? I found it in the shed. It was in the shed, but it was locked in a box. How did you get into it? The hinge of the back was broken. My hand fit through. Well, but why would you point the thing at your mother? I thought it'd be funny. Mate, it is never funny to point a real gun at anybody. You should have known that. What was it doing in the shed in the first place? I don't know. I don't think your mother was asking you. No, I wasn't. It was my father's gun, and you didn't want it kept in the house. Oh, no, you're not quite right there. I didn't want it kept at all. Well, I'm not getting rid of Dad's gun. Right. When you were a boy about Duncan's age, did your father keep the gun in the house? Yes, he did. And did he let you play with it? No, it was off limits. And did you play with it? Exactly. You can't expect a boy Duncan's age to have enough restraint not to play with it if it's in the house. Oh, the gun's disabled. Don't try and build a federal case against me. Why not? It is one, isn't it? Or have they suddenly made it legal to own an unlicensed firearm, disabled or not? The old dad's unit got there before the Russians, you see, and those German soldiers, they just surrendered on the spot. That's where your grandfather and his mates uh, knocked off all their weapons. I just spoke to the police and I told them about your gun. Why would you do that? I think I made my thoughts clear enough on the matter. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I was having a coffee and I couldn't help overhearing. I'm a journalist with the local paper, and I think what happened here would make a really interesting story. I was hoping you'd agree to an interview. Oh, no, no, I don't think so. I'm going to write the story anyway. Look, Miss... Uh, Reynolds. Uh, Kathy Reynolds. Uh, Kathy, yeah. It was just a harmless prank. You weren't as responsible, and the gun wasn't disabled. Would it still be a harmless prank then? But I am responsible, and the gun was disabled, so there's no story. I think there is. And your views are important. Sorry, your name is? Elsa Stewart. Mrs. Stewart. Look, Summer Bay is a small town with a large number of gun owners. There are also a lot of people who feel the way you do. And won't you help to give those people a voice? She makes me sound like some sort of fanatic. Ah, it's not that bad, Alf. Any gun stored within a home containing children is a gun owned by a fool. A gun is the final solution, and it's too late to be responsible after it's gone off, Stuart said. I told you not to talk to that woman. You just can't trust journalists, Alf. I do know that much. You should have just handed it to me, Alf. Oh, that's all I need. You screaming down this end of the phone, matching the sort of rubbish I've been hearing from the other end all morning. Well, you can't just take it. You've got a right to your opinion. Oh, are you saying you agree with me now? I'm saying you've got a right to your opinion. Which is exactly what I've been saying to every pro-gun person who's called. That plus the fact that I've been a bit misrepresented. Anyone been listening? No, not really. Well, that's because it's a very emotional issue. Yeah, a very emotional one-sided issue around here, evidently. Nobody's prepared to listen to the other point of view. I tell you, Alf, sometimes I'm not very proud of this town. Oh, hang on, hang on, Alf. I mean, you do have a point, but... Look, if you're going to be dogmatic about anything around here, you could easily start losing customers. Oh, so much to having the right to my own opinion. Alf. Ah, oh, g'day, Nick. Do you want to get to me troubles? You give him a surf club and all the new fangled gear, and this is the thanks you get. No account for some, is it? Ah, oh, you can say that again. Tell you what, if I caught one of them at it, I'd pump them full of lead. Eh? Hey? It's a joke, Alf. I'm a gun-toting loony, didn't you know? Ah, uh, right, so you've seen the paper to me. I have. And I don't appreciate being tarred with the same brush as some person who climbs a tower and takes pot shots at people. I'm a sportsman, not a homicidal maniac. Ah, oh, it's only a little article in a local rag, mate. I don't think too many people are going to take too much notice of that. You reckon? I mean, people know Alsa. They, 
they know she's a decent, reasonable sort of person. And when, when people get into the press and start saying that sort of stuff, it, it ruins the hard work that we've been doing to try and educate people on the issue. I don't know, mate. I didn't think it was all that bad. You made it sound like we we're ready to ride into town and shoot up the place. Ah, there you go, mate. Aren't you getting yourself a bit confused with uh, Clint Eastwood? I don't find it that funny, Alf. All right. And I'm not the only one. Linda Bennis, the president of the gun club, well, she's furious. Is that right? Just how furious do you reckon she is, Mick? I can't believe someone would do something like that. I oh, know it wasn't even my car either. It was Alf's. I don't know how we're going to get the paint off. Alf was absolutely broken. Hello, Ailsa. Marilyn. Hello, Linda. Hello. Look, um, I was very sorry to hear about what happened to Alf's ute. I wanted to let you know that none of our members would have done this. Oh, you're quite sure of that, are you? Yes, as sure as I can be. But you have to realise you've stirred up a hornet's nest with this article of yours. I only said what I thought. I'm sorry if you don't agree with me, but... Actually, I do agree with you on a lot of things. You do? Yes. Guns are potentially dangerous if they're not handled responsibly. I'm the first to admit that. On the other hand, they're not dangerous at all if you know what you're doing. Not dangerous. Guns are designed to be dangerous. They're designed to kill. I've never killed anything with my gun. I just love the sport of pistol shooting. In fact, that's why I've come over here, to invite you to come to the club and see for yourself what we do there. Oh, I think I have a fairly clear idea of what goes on there. Do you? Have you ever been to a gun club? Spoken to its members? No. Have you ever looked at the stats on gun use in this country? Done any research at all? No. But you felt well enough informed to spout your opinions in the paper. I'm entitled to my opinions just as you're entitled to yours. And in my opinion, a gun is a weapon, it is designed to kill, and it has no other purpose. I take it you won't be coming to the gun club then? No. No, I'm sorry, I won't. Here we are, two strong lattes. Oh, and no more opinions on guns, please. I've had enough to last me a lifetime. My lips are sealed, although I will say that I agree with you, Alice. Oh, Sorry, Trav. People can get pretty passionate about their guns. Oh, tell me about it. I had Linda Bennis in here from the gun club asking me to go out there and pay them a visit. And are you going? No, of course not. You think I should? Not if you don't want to. But... <laughs> Most people seem to have a pretty strong opinion on who should be allowed to have guns. But hardly anyone seems willing to listen to the other side's view. I don't see how you can claim to be the voice of reason when you're not even willing to listen to the other side's view. Excuse me, Ailsa. Oh, Linda. Hello, take a seat. Um, I've been talking to some of our members. They told me you were held up here quite recently. I wish I'd known. Oh? Well, it must have some bearing on your feelings. I've never been held up at gunpoint, but I know I'd feel pretty uncertain about guns if I had. Exactly. But you see, in a way, this just proves my point. Criminals always seem to be able to get their hands on a weapon. Honest, ordinary people like you and me, we can't get a gun to defend ourselves and our families. I, I thought you were only interested in the sporting aspect. Yes, but I've got a family, and it's a dangerous world we live in. I think you have to be prepared. No, I don't think drawing a gun on a gunman is an intelligent way to handle the situation. But don't you see that maybe just having a gun could be a deterrent? No. No, not really. Not unless I could mount it on the wall and have a flashing sign outside the diner saying, beware, shopkeeper has gun. Besides, I, uh, I wouldn't be able to get a gun license. I have a criminal record. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry. I do remember hearing something about that. Mm. Sometimes circumstances can force us to take drastic measures. I'm just not quite sure that they're worth the consequences. But surely, as a victim of violent crime... As a victim of violent crime, I think we should be putting fewer guns in circulation, not more. I'm sorry, Linda, but you'll never get me to agree with you. There you go. Looks like you beat the baker today. Oh, the bread. I'm sorry, I forgot. Thanks, love. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm just a bit tired, that's all. Well, you left home pretty early this morning. Yeah, I didn't sleep well last night. Had another nightmare. Oh, Ailes, why didn't you wake me? Well, so we could both be tired? Oh, I don't know what to do, Alf. They, they tell me I have to stop being a victim. I have to control my responses to what happened. But how do you control your dreams? I don't know. It just takes time, I suppose. Yeah, how much time? I can't keep living like this. The counselling isn't working. You've got to give it a fair go, Alf. You know what I reckon's brought all this on again? You going down to that gun club. How? 
Well, I don't know how these things work. It's just what I reckon. Would you mind putting these away for me? I have to get back to work. You still angry with me? Angry? For making your hand in your father's gun. Oh, I knew where you were coming from. But it meant a lot to you, didn't it? Hmm. I guess it's the memories, Al. You know, I can remember the old man taking me rabbit shooting when I was just a little kid. <laughs> I suppose it's a bit like me taking Duncan fishing. You know, it was a way of life. And sure, accidents happen, but... Well, when something went wrong, uh, people just didn't grab for a gun, you know? I don't know, maybe... Maybe they taught us to respect life more then. Look, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it was right to have the gun around the house with Duncan there, but... I guess you've got to understand that it's the person using the gun, not the gun itself, that causes the problem. Maybe you're right, Bill. Oh, better serve this one. Oh, what, what can I get you? Coffee. Black. Ow, 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 oh, that's ow, not very nice. Did you see that? See what? That, that little boy in the cowboy's outfit. Oh, it's every kid I know has got a cowboy outfit and a gun. Yeah, well, maybe that's why there's so many problems with guns today. Oh, come off it, Alice. Aren't you making a mountain out of a molehill? Why don't you just give it a bit of a rest? I, I can't. They're everywhere I look. On the movies, on the police, in the street. I've heard so many arguments for and against. I just don't know what to think anymore. Oh, hello, Elsa. Quite nice. Yes. What's that? It's, uh... It's a gun shooter's magazine. Oh? Mm. Linda Bennis from the Shooters Club brought it in for me so that I could read up on things from a gun owner's point of view. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've been looking through some of the articles, though, and honestly, some of them I find disgusting. I mean, I know certain animals need to be culled, but uh, hunting for the sheer pleasure of it. No, I know. I've, uh, I've never been able to understand it either. Maybe it's a, it's, a, it's a throwback to our primeval past or something. Whatever it is, it's disgusting. Yeah. Now, what can I... Mara, and there we are, herbal Thank tea for you. you. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm oh, so sorry. sorry. Here we are, look, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got something to mop okay. it up. Yeah. You okay, love? Oh, yeah, I'm just a bit preoccupied, that's all. But you've been preoccupied ever since Duncan had that gun. Look, I know you feel strongly about it all, love, but don't you think you're becoming a little obsessed with this whole gun thing? Look, love, I wasn't... Uh, well, I wasn't entirely honest with you when I came home from the gun club the other day. Something happened when Linda put that gun in my hand. I felt... Well, for the first time since the robbery, I felt completely in control. And I couldn't help wondering if I found myself in a, another violent situation and the gun was there, whether I'd have the control not to use it. I wouldn't worry about it, Arthur. It's just some goose with too much time on their hands having a bit of a go, that's all. They're calling me a hypocrite just because I went to the gun club. Listen, Mrs Stewart appeared on remarkably friendly terms with the gun club's president, considering she had so vehemently condemned all such establishments in this very paper only last week. Oh, Mrs Stewart, I guess if you're brave enough to stand up for what you believe in, you're bound to come in line for some criticism. Yeah, don't worry about it, love. I can't win whatever I do. Hi, did you catch anything? No, too choppy out there today. How's it been in here? All right, except for the odd nasty glare. You're kidding. Oh, no, I'm not. People are taking this whole thing very seriously. Are you sure you're OK? Yes, I'm not too bad. As a matter of fact, I feel more relaxed than I have all week. Yeah? Yes, I'm sorry if I've been a bit of a nightmare lately. I've been so worried about what's right and what's wrong that I turned the whole thing into a personal dilemma. I don't need to put that sort of pressure on myself or on you. So, I've decided that I can have a mixed opinion if I want to. Well, yeah. good for you. Yeah. Wouldn't mind getting rid of this, though. <laughs> Consider it done. Al? Dan? Anyone home?
Could I have one of your lovely salads, please, with our Mom, salmon? Mom, some money. And Duncan, that's rude to interrupt, darling. Oh, sorry, but can I? What for? A uh, new game from the Game Boy. But I, yeah, I just bought you a new game. Oh, it's boring. Please, Mom. Oh, you'll have to wait until I'm ready to go shopping. Take the keys for me, will you, darling? My hands are full. Oh, you're home early. Yes, we did a bit of shopping. Ah. I'm hungry. Oh, well, let's see what we've got in here, then. That's not another new game, is it? Don't start, Alf. Yeah, we'll just keep it down to a dull roar, would you, mate? There you go. Duncan, your favourites, I believe. Oh, come on, mate. Watch what you're doing, eh? Oh, Duncan. Sorry. So, how was work? Oh, pretty ordinary. Nobody bought anything. We sat around like shags on rocks looking at each other. How was your day? Dreadful. We were rushed off our feet. Uh. What's this? Ah, uh, nothing, mate. Now, come on, Al. For heaven's sake, what's in the box? It's Granddad's gun. You handed that over to the police. Yeah. Yeah, I did. But uh, while I was there, I inquired about an heirloom license and finally came through. I got the gun back today. It's in my hair. You, you never mentioned this to me. Uh, Alts, um, you were, you were pretty upset at the time, you know, and, and like Dunk said, it, it doesn't work anyway. It's been disabled. You couldn't shoot anybody with it, and I did promise Dad I'd look after it. All right. You don't mind? I'll go along with it, provided that you keep it out of my sight and preferably locked. And provided that you explain to Duncan, I never want to see a gun in his hand again, never. Fair enough. Thanks, love. Thanks, ma'am. Da, ah, uh, ah, uh, hands off. Your mother doesn't want you to touch it, and after what's happened, I agree. I could clean it, please. No, 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 mate, I'll clean it. I promised your granddad I'd look after it for you. Besides, it's disabled, you see? The firing pin's been removed in there, see, in the centre? You couldn't shoot anybody with it if you wanted to. But it still looks pretty real. You know, if a crim got his hands on that, he could terrorise people, commit all sorts of crimes. That's why I'm going to keep it locked away. And I'm going to be the only one with a key, you get me? Good, Good man, off you go. <laughs> thank you. Oh, no, Al, thank you for being so understanding. <laughs> Duncan, must we have that on? See what you mean. Come on, mate. That's enough. Hey, I'm watching that. Uh, not anymore, you're not. But I want to see how it ends. Mate, I'll, um, I'll show you how it ends. I'll even tell you how it ends. The good guys win, and the bad guys get shot to pieces. Now, it's pretty late. Why don't you hit the sack, eh? It's not fair. Hey, give us a kiss. Mm. Bye-bye. You know, Alice, it's um, hard to find any film at all that doesn't have a gun in it these days. Yes, I think I'll have to give up telly and take up knitting instead. <laughs> you don't mind Dad's gun being back in the house? No, I don't mind. Oh, it'll be something to tell my trauma counsellor in the morning. It's my last session, thank goodness. Oh, that's right. You graduate. Um, you, well, you'll get a diploma and everything. You ought to get your photo taken so we can bung it on the mantelpiece. <laughs> We'll have to get a rig on soon. We have to be in Yabby Creek at nine. Um, Duncan has a dentist appointment. Oh, Dunk, you poor thing. Never mind, your mum will be there to hold your hand. I don't need it only want you to hold my hand. Besides, she's not going to be there. No, it's my last trauma counselling session this morning. Mm, trauma counselling. I tell you what, Mrs Stewart, it won't be long before we're all going to it. Look, listen to this. Police suspect a woman whose body was found last week may have been murdered. They are refusing to release any details. Oh. Makes you wonder where that dreadful Robert Perez person's been hiding. Long way away from here, hopefully. Yes, I hope so. Do you know, Donald checks all the doors and windows every night just to make sure that I feel secure. I'm really worried that I'm going to pass on negative thoughts and feelings to the baby. Well, it's very wise of Donald to do that, Marilyn. Come on, Duncan. We'd better be going. You can finish that in the car, no? Well, good luck, <laughs> both of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, my goodness. How's it feel now? It's a little bit numb, but I didn't scream once. No, you were very brave. 
I'm sorry I couldn't be with you. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, these counseling sessions have been pretty helpful, but whew, I'm glad they're over. Oh, and I got something for you too. Here, give us my hand back. Sorry about that. What do you think you're doing? I'm sorry. I, I, you could have killed me. Oh, come on, get out of the car. Don't look at him. I want to see your license. I mean, where'd you learn to drive? Hey, I'm talking to you. Look at me. Come on, get out of the car. Come on, get out. <laughs> it's all right. He's not following us. He was going ballistic. I know he just lost his temper, love, that's all. He'll have calmed down by now. Whew, let's get a bit of fresh air in here, eh? Oh. What? Mum! Al, oh. oh, somebody's chasing us. Hey, he's trying to kill us. Whoa, 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 calm down. Take a deep breath. Oh, that, that, that was nearly an accident. And, and then this man stopped us, and then he, he chased us. He was in a brown car. Uh, Ford Station Wagon. <sighs> Mrs. Stewart, sit down. Oh. You're shaking. You poor Thank thing. You. Duncan, are you all right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just like I was saying this morning. Our town's going the way of the big cities. Crime and violence everywhere you look. Oh, well, he's not there now. I don't suppose you've got his number plate. No, I, I wasn't thinking. Uh, it started with an L, I think. Yeah, don't worry, mate. He won't come back anyway. Is that all right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's much better. Thanks, love. <sighs> what a mongrel act, eh? I can't understand how people can lose their temper like that. I mean, it's not as though I caused any damage. No, you handle it very well, from all reports. Is it just me, or is it happening more often lately? People attacking other people for no reason? Oh, I think the world's going to the dogs, love. I mean, look at Joel and Matt, eh? Living behind locked doors, wondering what that maniac's gonna do next. How do we put a stop to all this? Search me. I just wish I knew. Oh, it's all right, darling. Don't you worry. You're perfectly safe now. Yeah, he won't come back here, mate. I just can't stop thinking about it. Well, we'll have to find something to take your mind off it. Well, what about Bowman and Matt? It's really awesome to be late. Please, Mum. Bye-bye. All right, now we'll talk. No, I, I don't think so. Would you please leave? You think you can get away with anything, don't you? Well, you're coming down to the police station with me. I am making a complaint. You're making a complaint? Yeah, assault, willful damage. You're a menace to the community, Mrs. Stewart. You should be taken off the road. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't even touch you. You tried to run me down. I mean, taking off like that, chucking up stones. I mean, what about my windscreen? You're paying for that. What? Yeah, a hundred bucks that's going to cost me. Well, come on, I want the money. I'm not giving you any money. You owe me. Look, why don't you leave me your registration details and, uh, and I'll talk to my insurance company. Oh, yeah, right, and then they just find some way to get out of it. No, I am not playing that game, Mrs Stewart. See, I know where you live. Now, you pay up now or I'm taking matters into my own hands and I mean that. Get out. Get out or I'll call the police. Stay out, it's me. I'm, I'm not warning you again. Now, get out. If you see me again, Mrs. Stewart, you can count on that. You're all right. <laughs> 